Lebohang Munchane from the Independent Schools Association of Southern Africa joining us now to discuss the impact that this virus may have on schools. Lebohang, good evening and thanks so much for your time. Let's talk firstly about this particular case here. Now we have the health minister saying and other authorities in the province saying there is no need to close. You can stay open. There is no threat at the moment, but we have the schools saying that they will remain closed. Where does the buck stop in a situation like this, at a school like this? I think that all independent schools have a duty to their parents, and uh, to their parents, but, but more importantly to their children. Mm. And so if there's something that the school is concerned about to make an assessment and the risk assessment and for them to close for a period of time, that I think is, an, is, is the appropriate thing for them to have done in the circumstances. As they've said, they are assessing the situation and they'll make a decision in due course whether to open up or not. Mm. So who makes that assessment? Who's qualified to make that assessment? Because you have someone like the health minister you have your MEC telling you it's okay guys so who at the school is qualified to make such a, an assessment it's the Board of Governors with the head and the management committee of the school independent schools are actually protected in terms of section 29.3 of the South African Constitution giving them independence to determine uh, their, their decisions regarding education and whom and when how they will open for example all our independent schools are free to set up their I mean obviously meeting a minimum uh, regulatory standards when they'll have uh, uh, open up and close uh, for, for, for schools uh, their school calendar so some of our schools have three terms some of our schools have four terms and most uh, public schools are four term schools are they all governed by the same protocol or does each school set its own rules for any particular situation? You know, with this virus, so little of it about it is known. What we do know that it affects older people quite significantly and those, and those people who are immune compromised. So a school must, in all our independent schools, we say to them, you must make a decision based on the facts that are faced, that you are faced with at that time taking consideration the advice of public health officials. Mm -hmm. There's no really one, one case fits all. And so uh, one of our member schools has also asked uh, a pupil who is about three or four uh, persons removed mm -hmm. from the original person to self-quarantine. That was agreed between them and the school and as on an individual basis. But what we really emphasize is Sasa, don't panic mm -hmm. and actually keep up with where, what is happening around the world. So we now know that it's spreading around the world, but we don't know the extent of it. And, we, as, and I think that, as the doctor said earlier on, who was at Hilton, who saw this, uh, this, saw this patient, she's like, it's really just a very bad flu. Yeah. And so we must all calm down and not panic. Just clarify for us, because obviously you've been in touch and you know what's happening. Have these two boys been to school since they, since they came back from Italy? From what I have been informed, the boys were at school on Monday and Tuesday, and then they were once uh, it was determined that it seemed that their parent had been exposed, I do know that uh, it seems that the parent, the boys were not uh, back at school on Wednesday. So, I mean, there's also the question, Lebo Khang, of, you know, what happens to these two, two little boys? Are we, are we creating, you know, putting a bit of a, a target on their back? Is there a bit of stigma, you know, attached to this now when they do get back to school? Is there going to be people who don't, uh, kids who don't want to go near them? How, is, how, how, how should the school be, be navigating that or dealing with that? Oh, Oh, and I think that that is important. I mean, we're going into flu season now, and I think that with Corona-19 now, uh, coronavirus, it's important that we are now far more cautious. So we'd really advise parents uh, and staff, if you're not feeling well and fluy, don't be brave and come to school. So we do not, because we do not know what strain of uh, flu you may be having. And I think that this is going to affect everybody, uh, every school uh, during the, COVID, the, the flu, uh, flu season. And ultimately, it also must be remembered, there doesn't seem to be evidence that it actually affects children as badly as it affects older people. But just people. the idea that these two children, you, you know what happens when, when things, when you've seen the jokes out there, you've seen the hoaxes and all of that. Now, children are going to be children, and these two boys, they will know who they are. What is the school's duty? to protect them when they do get back to school. The duty is to make sure that everybody is respected quite significantly. And I think that knowing the school, I do not think that anybody would actually blame these children. And it must, it must be noted, 
um, there is no evidence that these children have the virus. Um, and so, you know, so we, there's no basis for them to be victimized. And I think that we really are concerned about their father, and hopefully he recovers quite soon. And I think that, you know, he also did the right things by following the right protocols. It's not as if he, you know, he, he, he felt fluey, he just sat around and started infecting other people. He immediately went to the doctor. So that's something that we should actually congratulate him and actually inform his children that look at what the good thing your father did. So in the case of when to reopen, I mean, we know, you know, people have to be in isolation at some level for about two weeks. Now, is the school going to have to wait two weeks? What do you know? What, well, what would be the things to consider here now? The, the, the probability of transmission of the virus, I think that that is what is actually a test that has to be determined. We do know that now that I know that Italy has made a decision to close all yes. schools. The United Kingdom has closed some schools, but not all. And I think that what we've seen in the United Kingdom and how this is been managed. The World Health Organization has been proud of it. The epicenter of, 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 of the virus in China, I know that China has closed more schools. Mm -hmm. So really there is no reason from our perspective that there should be a decision for the school to close uh, for long periods of time. They obviously have to, they, they they looked at the situation, said, look, we need more time before we put anybody in further danger. Let us close the school for today. They didn't say that they're going to close yeah. it forever. And suspend weekend and then we, and the, for the weekend, and then now we will make a decision. And I know that the board is meeting to make a decision of when is it best for them to, so to in open. The in the process of they meeting. are still considering the matter. All right, well, we'll wait and, and, and see what happens there. Thanks so much, Lebohang Munchane, Executive Director of the Independent Schools Association of Southern Africa. Well, NetBank has confirmed firm that an employee in Durban was one of the group that traveled with the country's first coronavirus case to Italy. The employee has been self-quarantined and is being tested for coronavirus. Staff who've come into contact with this employee have also been placed in isolation. NetBank says areas the staff member potentially came into contact with have been deep cleaned as a precautionary measure. Friday night. It is South Africa tonight and still on the way. Rights groups are angered as convicted child rapist Nicholas Ninao attempts to appeal his sentence.